up? It's your boy T Brown reaction to these music Monday. About to check out another the video from the homie from the channel Digging the Great. Somebody comment down the homie name. I forget, I don't want to keep saying the homie from Digging the Great man. I want to know his actual name as well too. I want to keep this because dude, I mean he's he's talent. He's a talented DJ and a good uh beat maker as well too. Cause I've seen his work on the videos as well too. So he got a new joint. On, he's talking about the infamous hip hop track drop. Well, how Jay Dilla and Farsam went backwards though. Shout out to Jay Dilla. I know my good good friend Furio's up there. There's some great collaboration with with Jay Dilla now. So yeah, R.I.P. to Furio. Those you know that sadly found a way he found out he passed in March. So I got word of that yesterday. So that's that. Um. So anyway, um. Uh, uh, and I already told you my connection with Jay Dilla and Far um Jay Dilla. Uh, Furio and Farside. Uh, he always. Tease me with the uh, the far side off the same album, Labra California, um, or La Corification, I think. The running uh, single cover, he always teased me with it, that because the little baby with snot nose, and, and like I said, I can't, can't triple that now because I got my own little snot nose kid right here as well, too. You know, he was snot enough. Shout out to my little man right here. So, anyway, we're going to check out. Um, how Jay Dilla went backwards. Here, yeah, put my mic way with foot. <laughs> How Jay Dilla went backwards with Drop. Let's get it. Far Side is an incredible song, incredible beat, mm -hmm. and baked within it, in multiple layers, is the idea of moving backwards. Yup. Yup. Not Sam just literally backwards. The sample, but too. Better than that. Backwards to go forwards, if that makes sense. Follow me as we dive backwards through this. I hope second the wife's calling. I'm um, back. His mommy called. Song, the producer, the samples, yeah, and eventually the end up moving forward in the process. Drop. Now, before we start, there are two versions of this video. This version mm -hmm. is on YouTube, so it's a little shorter with a little less music, but on Patreon, there's the full edit. It's longer, there's much more music, more commentary. Go check it out. Drop is from the Far Side's second album, Lab Cab in California, which Lab was Cab released in, California. in 1995. This is their second album after their debut, Bizarre Ride to mm -hmm. the Far Side from 1992. I've already broken down the song Passing Me By from this album, and when we looked at that, we saw that there's this group out of LA releasing a hip hop album in 1992, just a month before Dr. Dre's album The Chronic, which would help solidify a new West Coast sound. Mm -hmm. But the Far Side sound, their look, their lyrics, everything about yeah. them, it's different than other West Coast stuff. It wasn't so much a reaction to it, they just wanted to show that there's another sound coming out of LA. The Far Side leaned a little more native tongues in their sound and overall vibe, which was on the East Coast, but still they were doing things different. Instead of leaning into the new West Coast sound, they were doing things backwards, you might say, by leaning on a vibe that was more East Coast, where hip hop originated. Mm -mm. This it first was album was produced primarily by Jay Swift, who left the group before the album was completed. Oh. That meant that for their second album, Lab Cab in California, they needed a new producer. Some tracks on this album were produced by members of the group themselves, like mm -hmm. Slim Kid Trey and Fat Lip, mm -hmm. but there were other producers like M Walk and Diamond D, oh, as okay. well Them as days. a newer producer coming up, a kid by the name of Jay James Dilla. Yancey, aka Jay. JD, aka Jay Dilla. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right, it's that time in a Diggin' the Greats video where we talk about Jay Dilla. The last video I did on a Dilla song, someone commented, more like digging the great, cause you only ever talk about Dilla. And look, for one, I cover a lot of other stuff. And for two, yeah, actually, I do cover a lot of Dilla and I make no apologies. Of course my guy right there. Of course. Why I not? have talked a lot about Jay Dilla, so we're only gonna scratch the surface here because I have so many other in-depth videos. But Jay Dilla created some of the most incredible hip hop beats in history using many different techniques. Yep. It's not only his extensive library that he would sample from, his sampling style, but also his drums. 
A common misconception is that he simply turned the quantize feature off on his NPC and played everything in by hand. And he did do that sometimes, but the real innovation is not that he quantized everything or that he didn't quantize anything. It's that he used the quantize function in a brand new way, quantizing each element of the drum kit differently. Again, I've broken this down in other videos, but suffice it to say, he moved the needle, moved music forward, not by turning Quantize off, but by actually turning it on in multiple iterations across one beat. This is why his beats sound so unique, inventing a new way of feeling time. He moved things forward, but sort of going backwards. Now let's dive into the beat itself. This is where it gets really interesting. Yep. There's a few elements to this beat. The drums, the bass, the vocal sample, and then the other sample. We'll get there, stick with me. But for the drums, this particular song isn't an example of Dilla's new time feel, but it is a great example of his wandering kick feel. It's not that on this one the kick actually wanders, it's just it's a bit unpredictable at first, but it still feels amazing. Let's isolate the drums, here we go. Got the Serato stems, by the way. The feel baked into that is incredible. The kick goes from three kicks to two to one, then it repeats. We see this idea expanded further on the song running, but that's in another video. And then there's the vocal sample, the word drop. drop. This is sampled from the song The New Style by the Beastie Boys from 1986. Mm, drop. Now, what's notable about this sample is that yes, it's the name of the Far Side song, yes, it's the Beastie Boys, but also on the same album, Licensed to Ill, there's the song Paul that. Revere, which famously has a backwards sounding beat. Let's isolate the drums on yeah. that. This is a sample of the song It's Yours by T. The Rock and Jazzy J, which has been sampled and then reversed. That's why the Paul Revere beat sounds the way it does. So the Beastie Boys and producer Rick Rubin, they're also that doing kind of, back. I want to hear what you said about the beat. It was a sample of song because I was trying to grab him. He's trying to light, hoping to turn the lights off. Stop, 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 stop. You see some crazy color that me grab the remote for the lights song It's Yours by T. La Rock It's Yours, J, that's what I thought. Which has been it's, sampled and then reversed. I thought, was, I thought that was a reverse of that song. Okay, that's what I thought. That's why the Paul Revere beat sounds the way it does. Produced. So the Beastie Boys and producer Rick Rubin, they're also doing things backwards, but moving things forward in the process. The other sample on the Far Side song is this sound. Mm-hmm. But it's a reverse. Actually, yep. you know what though? I actually forgot. I gotta reverse it. Mm-hmm. Yep. That is the sound of a harp, and then, of course, a harp played backwards. This song was produced by Jay Dilla, but this beat specifically dates back to his early days of doing a basement beat battle, and it was Proof who actually programmed this sample to play in reverse. This, according to the incredible book, Dilla Time by Dan Charnas. Nice. Yes, that's right, another mention of this book. <laughs> Go read it. I like how you... Uh, oh, if you caught that. That was one take. I just happened to reach back. I like how he um doing the ding 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 like his uh BB Hermit. Like that's the the keyword. Ah, I love it. I grab it. Anytime I leave the house, you know it's like phone, keys, wallet. Oh, Dilla time. Make sure you got it with you at all times. I did it again. I'm on fire. Go ahead, man. All right, Jay Dilla drums a Beastie Boys sample, a backwards harp sample. Let's put it all together. Hear what it sounds like. Quick rundown of this session, basically this yellow part, this is Drop of the Far Side. This is the Dorothy Ashby song, which I've taken these sections right here and then just simply reversed them. Now, this is a work in progress. I'm not 100% sure that I've nailed this harp sample, backwards harp sample, exactly right. It's mostly there, but if you're in the producers tier on Patreon, you can download this, mess around with it. Let me know if you find something else. Uh, by the way, that harp sample, that's a harpist named Dorothy Ashby. 
She was born in Detroit, just like mm -hmm. Dilla, oh, and throughout nice. the 50s and 60s made a name for herself as a harpist. But mm. not just any harpist, a jazz harpist. Let's break this down for a minute because there was a lot that she was up against. For one, she's a black woman in the 50s and 60s. Oh, for two, she's a black harpist, which was much mm -hmm. less common. And right. for three, she was playing jazz, which is dominated by men. And that's all before we get to the physical difficulties of playing uh -huh. jazz on a harp. The piano has one note per key. The guitar has one note per fret. Trumpet or trombone or sax, you play one note at a time and using a combination of your lips and a specific fingering, you get a note. But with harp, you've got a set scale of notes. Those strings are not chromatic. It's not one note per string. Instead, you have a scale, and in order to change a string oh, to get one of those in-between notes, uh -oh. you have a series of foot pedals that go up or down to change the pitch. This works fine for most classical music, as composers would write harp parts with the mechanics of the instrument in mind. When you get to jazz, though, things are just so much more open. Those in-between notes are crucial. What I'm trying to say is that playing jazz on a harp is insane. It is. So Dorothy Ashby, with so much going against her, not only for the time she lived in for people who looked like her, but the genre of jazz and the mechanics of the harp itself, wow. she managed to go against the grain, against all of this, pushing so forward with jazz harp, even though that was unheard of. So then you take this, you sample her backwards, and it so just it adds <laughs> another layer to the song. Dorothy Ashby had been sampled before this by producers like Pete Rock and RZA for Jizz's Liquid Swords, as well oh, okay. as many other samples since. But this backwards harp sample, combined with the Beastie Boys sample, who had also done this backwards sampling technique, combined with Dilla and the Far Side, this backwards theme is running decades back. Crazy. But if you combine all of this and then watch the music video, exactly it's mind blowing. Also black. This video was directed by Spike Jones and was made by filming the group walking and rapping backwards, then reversing the footage so it looks like they're walking and rapping forwards while everything around them is moving backwards. In order to go forwards, the far side had to go backwards. Not only for the video, but for the group in general, Dilla, Proof, the Beastie Boys, and Dorothy Ashby. Speaking of going backwards, let's talk about Passing Me By Off, their first album, but that video has already been released, and it's right here. Alright, cool. Cool. This is a good little piece of history about the song. Back, um, no, it's called song backwards. Drop as well, too, though. How everything was backwards as well, too. So, yeah. Um, other than that, cool little video, right, as well, too. I'm sure the homie, um, would definitely enjoy that. Be watched it as well, too. The homie, uh, DJ Furio. Uh, you know, Farside and Jay Dillard's one of his famous artists, the famous producer of Farside, one of his famous artists as well, too, though. So, yeah, other than that. If you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T. We're signing off. One love.